the Trump sit down on Fox News where, while not going after him nearly hard enough, they did post some follow-up questions and fact checks, which is kind of surprising. So I thought we could look over these clips and jump in with the needed context as always. You talk about the enemy within. There's enemies, America's enemies yeah. outside. Uh, the enemy within is a pretty ominous phrase if you're talking about other Americans. I think it's accurate. I mean, I think it's accurate. It's funny because MAGA pretended after Trump was shot that they had this moral high ground of, well, the left has the incendiary rhetoric and they need to cool it down and we would never do this. Yet, you don't hear a peep from these people when Trump is the one calling Democrats our enemies, other Americans the enemy within. When he's saying something has to be done about them, hinting he would utilize the National Guard to go after them, that's all completely fair game. I mean, MAGA will literally make the claim that, oh, Trump's not divisive, it's the left. It's the media who's divisive. Meanwhile, Trump is here literally saying, those who don't agree with me are the enemy. Democrats are fascists. They're all criminals. They're stealing and ruining the country. Like the hand wringing that MAGA will do for Trump is disgusting to say the least. The other day you called it a day of love. That sparked a lot of reaction given that many police officers were attacked and there were mobs shouting, hang my pants. Can you understand why many Americans would view it as a dark and tragic day in our history? The the crowd I spoke before, which you rarely see, I have pictures of it, they're massive, but nobody wants to put them in, it was the biggest crowd I've ever spoken to, and I've spoken to the biggest crowds. I've never seen that many people. Mm -hmm. uh, a small group of them, and you know peacefully and patriotically, which nobody uses, my words were peacefully and patriotically, a small group went down to the Capitol. But they came, they came because they thought it was a rigged election. They, they, it was, this was a protest against a rigged election. And I can't say exactly the number, but I've had massive crowds, and this was by far the biggest crowd. Okay, so a couple things need to be addressed here. He said peacefully and patriotically one time, right at the very beginning of his speech, before he then went on multiple times throughout the speech to say things like fight like hell, force Mike Pence to do the right thing, fight or you won't have a country, which kind of tosses out your one peaceful refrain that you made briefly in the very beginning. Second, notice how even when asked about officers dying, being injured, he just goes on to talk about his own crowd size and how he's spoken to the the biggest crowds. Everything has to just be about him to him. It's his narcissism showing and how great he is, or he just doesn't want to engage with it. And as we show in my interview, I'll leave here with a director of a recent documentary of January 6th. It was long planned, culminated by those close to Trump like Steve Bannon. And Trump took advantage of this to further his attempt to steal the election rather than release the National Guard or call off the mob in any capacity. But now he's saying, well, first he said he would have released the National Guard on Black Lives Matter. Now he's saying he'll do it on Democrats. Democrats, but he wouldn't do it to MAGA. That is notable. General Jim Mattis, who was your Secretary of Defense, has now joined General Mark Milley, who was your Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, in saying, this is their quote, uh, you are the most dangerous person ever. I assume you'd like to respond. Well, they were not uh, my cup of tea. They were, uh, they were woke. You know that. They were not great generals, in my opinion. Uh, I was... Uh, asking them advice. I didn't agree with the advice. Look at the advice that Milley gave to Biden on Afghanistan. Move the soldiers out first. No, you have to move the soldiers out last. Uh, I don't respect them as soldiers. I never did. I, I fired them both. Right. He's saying that he doesn't respect five-star generals as soldiers on top of him calling John McCain a loser for being a prisoner of war. When are we going to stop pretending that he respects our troops because it's clear he doesn't? The truth is the two wouldn't go along with his authoritarian aspects, so he fired them. Trump wanted to invade Venezuela. He dropped the biggest bomb ever on Afghanistan. He went against military advisors and attacked Iran, leading to a retaliation that killed three Americans and injured dozens. So they wanted no part in that. And it's not like they rely on Trump for a living or name recognition either. Both are well-respected, prestigious generals. So to pretend it's like a bitter ex-worker situation is the only reason they're saying he's a fascist is insane. It's just, again, whatever hand-wringing MAGA can do for Trump, it doesn't matter to them that dozens of those work for him, call him dangerous, a fascist, refuse to endorse him, including his VP, because all the people who know him best are lying, and we instead have to trust MAGA, who's never met him. I mean, got it. Makes sense.